So last Tuesday, I shared a city map generator tool, and if you looked around on there, you would have seen or you would have found that it was actually attached to another map generator that we're talking about today, a world map generator. Hey fellow Game Masters, I'm Richard Quiner, and welcome back to the Daily D20, your daily dose of all things tabletop role-playing games, helping you build your world and master your game. As always, if you like what's on this channel, I invite you to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you can get notified when there's new videos every day. That's right, today we are talking about not just a city map generator, but we're talking about a world map generator. This one is called Asgard's Fantasy Map Generator, and it is a website that's easily accessible. The links will be in the description below. It's a pretty big URL, so I'm not gonna say it out loud, but it is a really cool tool. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna get into some of the options and figure out how we can use this to make our own worlds. The reason I really like this tool is I'm not a cartographer. I'm not exactly artistically inclined. I can paint minis, but that's about it. I can color between the lines. Loading into Asgard's Fantasy Map Generator, it brings you to a map pretty much right away. It's gonna be really zoomed in. You're gonna be able to see all the towns and such laid in there. But as you zoom out, you'll see that it's actually delivered you a pretty big landmass with a whole lot of details, a lot of cities, a lot of countries and territories all laid out for you to use. But this isn't all you have. You are able to customize this map a lot more by going up to the top left corner. You'll see a small triangle kind of pointing sideways and this is your generator options. Now the first tab of these options are the layers. This shows you what is visible to you in that moment and there are several different buttons you can press that give you different things visible. It does come with some presets for things like political maps or height maps or if you just want a pure landmass map. You can get those very quickly just by using the presets, but you can also go through and activate or deactivate certain layers to get the look that you're looking for. The oceans button really just toggles the texture of the oceans on or off. If you want texture or if you want just a solid blue, that's your button you're gonna push. The height map adds colors varying from blue to red, denoting the height or altitude of the land masses on this map. The grid option shows you actually where the difference of territories lie in the world you're building. They're kind of some polygonal grids that show up they're pretty small and you can see they'll also outline specific colors each grid will have its own different shape and its own different color next up is overlay which actually just gives you a hex grid that lays over everything similar to other role-playing games where they have maps that have a hex grid that denotes kind of a distance it gives you a scale of the world you're in now the cultures button gives you sections where the territory all shares a similar culture and in this map generator they use normal cultures that we have in our modern times such as korean chinese italian these kind of things in order to generate the cultures of your map the roots option gives you roads from all the different cities and towns and it shows kind of reddish orange lines that connect all the towns together and basically just shows your trade routes rivers is very self-explanatory it shows you the rivers that are in your world and the rivers, I gotta say, are actually really cool and it's really neat to have a landmass with some pretty accurate looking rivers running through it. The countries option gives you different segmentations that are color coded by country. Now these are not the same as cultures. So if you have these both active, you're gonna see it's a lot of crossover and a lot of weird colors going on because the cultures and the countries aren't necessarily equal. So keep that in mind, the countries that your map generates are different than the cultures that your map will generate. The relief option gives you more little icons, kind of an artistic elements. They add little icons for mountains and trees and plains and hills, these kind of things that just adds a little more depth to your map. Makes it a little more fantasy-like. The labels button are really just toggling the words of the cities and the towns and the countries on and off. And the icon button toggles on and off the circles that denote the cities and the towns on your map. There is one more button here called markers, but I spent some time looking at it and trying to zoom in on the map and I couldn't find what it does. So if you know what it does, tell me in the comments below because I don't know what it does. If we go to the next tab, it is the style tab and this is where you're able to select different aspects of the map such as the routes or the roads or the grid lines, the different countries, different things, and you can actually change the style of the art of those to make it match your preference. So if you wanted something a little more sepia toned or black and white, you could go in here and remove all the color from your map if that's what you really wanted. There's a lot of options in here. I don't wanna go through every individual one because there's so much more to go over in this tool. The next tab is the options, and these are more technical terms and technical options for your map, but they're still really handy in creating some really good world maps. 
first up is the map size. This is just the resolution in numbers. Mine is set close to 4K because that's what my monitors are that I'm working on. But you can set this to any number you would like as long as it runs well on your computer. Next up is the map cell density. Now each map is made up of several cells and each cell has its individual attributes. This is usually the height of the cell or the colors, the territory that might be, if it's water, if it's grass, if it's mountain. These kind of things are all cells. The cell map density determines how many cells are in a given area. So if you crank this up to three, you have a much different gradient than if you have it down at a one. The one is kind of blocky or it's a little more rough around the edges, but if you turn it up to three, there's a lot more cells to deal with and it creates a much smoother gradient in the colors and the height map. The height map template is different presets that determine what kind of landmass you're making. This can be volcanoes, islands, archipelagos, mainland landmasses, continents. You have a whole bunch of different options here and each time you select it and hit the new map button, you're gonna get a totally different looking map. So it's a really cool tool to get close to what you're looking for very quickly is just adjust this and hit new map and you're getting closer. The Berg's count option basically tells you how many cities or towns are in your map. The state count and state disbalance options both deal with the countries of your map. You can have more countries or less countries depending on your personal preference and what you're looking for in your map. And the disbalance option determines how balanced these country sizes are. If you want small countries and large countries, you gotta change the disbalance to allow for more of that. The neutral distance, I don't quite understand, but I feel like it's kind of the distance between different countries or different capitals, but don't take my word for that. Go check it out on your own. The culture count determines how many different cultures are on your map. If it's kind of a small island that would have a lot less cultures, you can turn this down to much lower and have maybe one or two cultures on the island. But if it's like a landmass or a large continent kind of thing, you can turn this up and have a vast array of cultures. The precipitation option determines how much water is on your landmass. Turn this up, you get more rivers and lakes. You turn it down, you get less. The relief icon size and density determines how the relief icons look on your map. If you want them a little bigger, if you want them to have more in a smaller area, you can turn up your density and it just fills in the map depending on your options. The swampiness option, I honestly couldn't tell you what this does. I turned it up, I turned it down, I didn't see a thing. So that's another one. If you know what it does, let me know in the comments below. The ocean layers options determines how many gradients of ocean you're having. If you look at some of these maps, you'll see there's only three different colors of ocean as it goes from landmass to the deep ocean. You can turn this all the way up to nine and have a nice smooth gradient, or you can keep it down at three and have more of a stepped gradient depending on your personal preference for your map. Now the last tab we're gonna look at is the Customize tab. This is where you can get into the fine details of your map, change a lot of the properties of the countries and the cultures, and even paint the height map to what you really want it to be yourself. As you dig through the Customizer, it's important to note if you decide to change the height map, it's going to ask you if you want to clear off your rivers and waterbeds. That's because the rivers and lakes are determined by the height map. So I suggest you absolutely clear your rivers and lakes from your map, unless you put them someplace you really want them to be, then adjust your height map using the brush tools. You can raise and lower different territories to get the right look that you're going for. And then when you hit complete, it will regenerate new rivers and lakes for the map. And those rivers and lakes will kind of fit with the terrain that you've built. So that is, I think, that one of the first things you should do is customize your map to a nice look and a height map that you really want for your world. In addition on here, they have a country editor and a culture editor, which gives you options of changing population, color schemes of countries and the cultures, and the different territories that you're dealing with. It's pretty simple, you just have to look through it and play with it a little bit. You can also change the culture's names, you can change the country's names, and so forth. And the last thing I wanted to mention, if you zoom really close to your map, you'll see your different bergs, aka the cities and towns, and if you click on one of the dots, it will give you options to edit it. This is how you can rename towns, you can change the color of the font, you can change the size of the font. I know this was a lot to go over, but next week I hope you come back because I'm going to be sitting down and beginning to build a world map for my world that I'm working on for my Workshop Wednesday videos. Stick around and check that out and hopefully you enjoy the power that this tool really has because I was blown away by it. I like these Tooltip Tuesday, but I really wanna know what problems are plaguing you as game masters. Let me know in the comments below what troubles you're running into and maybe I can find some tools that can help you solve those problems. Keep me posted down below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and of course subscribe to the channel so you get my new videos every day. And well, Game Masters, I've been Richard Quiner. Thank you for watching.